Start recording. Okay, so where we left off, we were doing some of uh, this business over here. Um, and it's been a little while, so we'll just quickly review what we did. <coughs> um, so if you recall, we have, um, we, have our, we have our shape. And we basically, where ultimately we want it to hit some target over here. And to do that, we want it to go up some distance, you know, to get over like an imaginary wall. So it looks good. And so we're going up and then down and we were hitting this thing. And so we divided this into three parts. <laughs> um, basically, we need to know how quickly to go up. And we also need to know how quickly to go sideways because um, you know this, this breaks down into the two axes so we figured out um, you know this is this is component one is like how how hard do we have to throw this so that we get uh, velocity equals zero at the top of this arc um, so we have this sort of first segment and then we're going to have this second segment here and then we're going to have this sort of third segment that is like the x distance um, and so the reason we want to do this is um, if we if we know how long the arc is going to take, if we know how long it's going to take to go up and then down and reach this height on the y-axis, then we know how long we have to get from you know here to here on the x-axis. Um, and if we know how long we have, we know how fast we need to go. Um, and obviously on the x-axis there's no acceleration like we've got gravity acceleration here but uh, sideways it's just velocity um, and obviously we're ignoring anything like wind resistance and stuff uh, air resistance so that's the basic premise of where we were at so is that all happy town um yeah i remember there's some complexity to the second section we didn't get that far <coughs> just trying to find where we were so um what we did so so the what we're going to do is we're going to basically do some more algebra um, and like the idea is basically get a little bit of practice at using these things so i'll just go over what we did last time is you know we we need to know how far to go up and what we have is we have um <clears throat> the distance we need to go which we calculated as like the maximum of that or you know if if our target is um like above us then the sort of wall we have to go is that high so that's that um you know max in our code um that we ha we had in there uh so we know how high we need to go up so that's the distance s uh <clears throat> what else we um know the velocity that we want the final velocity is zero and uh, we know the acceleration due to gravity you know g uh so we have s uh v and g and we want to find u which is the initial velocity and so we go through here and we're like, all right, well, what has, what, what have we got here that's got S acceleration, uh, velocity and initial velocity. And it's like, okay, it's, it's, it's number four. So what we did is we took that, um, formula is like V squared equals U squared plus two A S. And we did a bit of, uh, algebra. So we like kick this over the other side. So V squared equals two, uh, sorry, V squared minus. 2as equals u squared and then we just square root the thing so it's like square root of v squared minus 2as equals u and so that's how we calculate the initial velocity <coughs> so uh, and that should seem familiar so if we go back to the code uh, over here uh, and that's what we have here and we calculated it like so <coughs> so that's everything we got up to so is, is that all hunky-dory um yeah although i think didn't we kind of actually end up with five like s is vt minus one half at squared i mean i think that's this is exactly what this is here is it not uh this one uh well, i guess no okay i've written it wrong oh i see i'm i'm just looking at my own notes for how we integrated to get to that point uh which is the one half okay a. okay yeah yeah so this is so we're using formula, that's formula two, and we're using that just to do the animation. So it's like, all right, now once, once we've calculated 
uh, the initial velocity, and we've calcul- we we know the acceleration, and we're going to advance time, um, you know, over time. So we have an animation that's going to change uh, the value of the position as time changes, and that's going to give us that nice physical simulation. So that's two is like the one we came up with, um, yeah, with with calculus, like we integrated to get that. Um, right. So that's okay. that's this is kind of the core one. This is like two is the important one. Uh, ultimately, but all the right. other ones. This are actually, used to... right, yeah. and this this one won't change. That's just yeah, like you just said. This is what's providing our our animation data is changing the draw position. Exactly. So, oh. um, we've got we've done we've done that up part here. So now we want to do uh, do, 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 do. Uh, we need to find the time because uh, ultimately, like we we've done we've done this first green arrow. That's we're happy with this one. We need to get the horizontal arrow. So we need to know the time to get across here. Um, and I mean, we could go through and figure it sort of forwards and be like, well, what do we need? Oh, we don't have enough variables. We need time, but uh, you know, that that's kind of really the easy part. So we're gonna we're gonna sort of skip over that and just be like, yeah, we need we need the time. We're just we're just gonna say we need the time, and hopefully that's obvious. And so we need to figure out the time up. And time down and add them together. Um, so this is this is where I'm going to sort of send it over to you, and we're going to go through the same process to figure out the algebra over here. And so the questions that you need to ask and then answer are, you know, what variables do you want? What variables do you already have? And then pick an algorithm, pick a formula that uh, equation that. Uh, does the right thing. So, what are your yeah. thoughts? Um, well, I have you, mm-hmm. um, and you know, because I can derive it, and I have, um, let's say, I have. Um, wait a minute. Do I have v? Well, we have v is the final velocity, so yes. Yeah. Right. I'm just looking at this, and this is sort of like where we were, like trying to reach zero at that point. Okay, so I have u, I have v, and I'm looking for t, and um, I want to say I have s because I always have s in this case. Yep. Uh, um, so we 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 know what this distance here is. So yes, we have s. Yeah. So looks like um looks like number three is the winner. Number three, um, yes, we can do number three. We actually, um, <clears throat> yeah, let's go with number Could three. Do two as well, actually. Well, well, oh no, that's that's too hard. Um, <laughs> uh, what I'll is? T- I'll point out we have a, a as well. Sorry. Yeah. What is a? A in this case is a constant acceleration for gravity, or what is? A is the gravity. Yeah. Position, right. Yeah. A, yeah. Oh, no. So. We actually have everything except T, um, right. so you can choose any yeah. one you like, pretty much here. Yeah. So if you want to go with three, well, that's one. not unreasonable. Oh, the easy one. I want the easy one. The first one looks easier. Okay, you want to go with number one? Sure. That's yeah. a good choice. V is um, equal to U plus A T. Therefore, um, if I want to move, well, I'm very, it's very rusty at this, but I could move. Um, I could move the p minus u is equal to a t. Hang on, uh, t minus u is equal to a t. Oh, v minus u. So yeah. I mis- misheard that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's minus correct. Yep. U, and then basically, I just want to go v minus u divided by a is equal. Where's my? There it is. It's equal to t. So I'll just move that over here. So, t is equal to v minus yep. u divided by a. And that gives us the time uh, for that first segment. Now, um, <clears throat> we're going to run into a small snag here, and that is we've used all the variable names. So we're going to have to come up with a, a sort of naming scheme that works a little bit better for us. OK. So we could just say that t equals like time up. Um, Oh. 
And then what sorry here? Oh yeah, the good old int minus specter thing. How do we get rid of that? Okay, Last so time. we only have to worry about the X or no, or the Y. There's only one component. Well we have two components, right? We need to go up and then we have to go right. But this so, is time up, so I'm gonna assume. We're it's still y. working on the Y axis, yes. Yeah. So in fact, this um Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is this is fine for now. This will do. Um, so A Y. So we actually have G for that um, at the moment. So yeah, yeah, good. Not think. I don't think. Are we even using A anywhere? Oh, yeah, we are. Um, I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's Let's right. use A Y. Sorry. Sure. sure. Having some issues with my laptop monitor here. Mm -hmm. And U is also I mean, a vector. Yeah, we would just use U dot Y. Keep switching into insert mode there. Okay, so that's time up. Yeah, and I mean this float v, we could we could get rid of it. We could, we could probably do this. Just call it a constant if whichever. Um... Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> whichever works best for you. Um, probably const float uh, is probably better for this particular purpose. Um, so what I will point out, which is, it's worth uh, thinking about here. Um, and I'm just going to, I am just going to get rid of V just because that's what's in my notes just for now. Like I can put it back, but um, V equals zero is obviously just, it, it right. goes away. Just and mm -hmm. so what we can think about is, all right, we've got negative velocity. We know velocity is going up and so it's going to be positive. And acceleration, uh, we know acceleration is going down so it's going to be negative and then we negate the whole thing so it's positive divided by a negative is going to equal a negative and then you negate it and that's going to be positive so we know that the value of time up is going to be positive so that's a useful little sanity check we can do um does that make sense oh oh yeah okay yeah because a y is gravity which is negative yep yeah so okay. this is so you're basically saying this should be positive yep so, I mean, it, it does make sense uh, in some cases. Uh, I'm not sure. We sort of talked about that last time, how like it wouldn't really resolve to be negative because you'll always be heading in a direction away from your target. Yes. Um, so, <clears throat> exactly, exactly. And um, like this still works if you've got uh, Y negative is up, like client space coordinates. But this is the sort of thing where it's like, we always do it physics with Y plus is up and positive Y is up. And then there's just like, just makes these sanity checks really easy. So that one's the easy one. So time up, piece of cake. Um, and I'll just put the V back just cause that's what you have as well. Let's go back to the drawing board. Okay, so the next one we need to get is time down. And so we'll go through the same process. So what have we, what do we want? What do we have? I mean, we want time, obviously. So over to you. The new thing that we want is the um, position. There's a new position, right? So it's a new S, mm -hmm. um, which I don't know if we have. Uh, it doesn't look like we have that. So. Um. Well, we know where here is, and we know where here is, so we actually should have S, because well, it's just going to be... Sorry, maybe I don't recall. Um, where is the, the red X right now? Um, okay, so Same we don't... Possible. We actually, I mean, in one way of thinking about it, we don't have S directly. We can, we can calculate S quite easily, though. Um, so red S would be... Um, target, target dot Y would be the red X. Yes. So world oh, mouse position. Well, oh. I thought the mouse position was dictating that. Oh, I get it. Okay. In, in the current example, the mouse position is just the, the orange X, but we're just going, we're, we're, we're changing it so that it's the red X. Um, and then the, the height, the lob height is going to be dynamic based on, based on that. Right. Um, Cause nor, because I think right yeah. now, if you 
press the space bar, it'll so sort we, of move up to the... Yeah, so we, we, we have two different S's in this case. So we've got this S, S right. up, and we've got S down. Okay. And so, yeah, and we, we can calculate this easily because we know where that is and where this is. Okay, so we have okay, so we have well, we have all the same stuff we did before. Um, well, let's let's go through and, and we, we, so we have S, right? S two. We have yeah. Uh, well, I'll call it SD because yeah, that's right. probably easier. SD. We got SD. And that's just target Y. And we have we obviously have acceleration for gravity. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Now, now, the initial velocity. Well, this is now we're in this part of the arc, so we're here. So this v in the second half, like u d, is going to equal zero. So v u. So the upwards end velocity of the up segment is zero, but the start velocity of the down segment is zero. So we have um, we have u for the down segment. Okay. Um, so it sounds it sounds like we actually have everything. We just have to do it in the reverse direction. Well, uh, I I will say there's one thing that we don't have as as well as t. We also don't have v. So we don't know what the velocity is at this point. Oh, I thought you just said we had it. It was zero because we have reached zero already. I uh, know. Oh okay. So let me let me just scribble that out. So we've got. We've got two different segments that we're working with. So over here, we're going to have V of the up segment equals zero. And here we've got U of the down segment equals zero. So this is the same point. Like both of these are at the very top of the arc. But because right, we've of got, course. Yeah. Yeah. My, yep, my yep, mistake. Yep. Yeah. So we, yeah, UD is equal to V. Yes. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so if we need T, we need T D and when T down and we also need um V down. Well we don't um, need so. we don't need we don't actually care what the velocity is at this point. And and we could we could calculate it um as well. Like uh you only I think you probably could calculate if, if you wanted V, we could stick V up there and we could calculate that as well from just these three. Oh, okay. But what you're basically saying is, but we don't need we it. Don't, we don't. Yeah, care. we don't need it. So then, um, well, we have S, we have U, and we have A, and we're looking for T. Um, so we could use two. Uh, two's looking pretty good. So we've got S, we've got a U, we've got a T, we've got an A, and a T. Yep. Okay. So that's the four that we are interested in, and we have only one unknown. So two is an excellent choice. So let's uh, go down and rewrite that sucker. So. Um, S equals U T plus one half A T squared. So here comes the fun algebra part. <laughs> Solve for T. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you can, can you do them at the, do you have to move the components at the same time when you um, move the side or can you do them one at a time? Well, okay. So here's, here's the problem that you have here. So I just want to go back to this one quickly. So when we say like move, what we're really doing, if we take this, um, let's rewrite that. So V equals U plus A T. So what we're doing when we say move U to the other side, what we're doing is we're really doing, uh, you know, this is plus V. So it's like plus U, uh, sorry, this is minus U and this is minus u and then we're like all right well we've got uh u and minus u so we can cancel that and cancel that and then we end up with our thing at the end is like uh v minus u swap those two over equals a t so it's not so much moving as we're doing the same thing to both sides yeah no I, yeah i, I didn't yeah i understand Yep. Like that I don't I remember the term. I think it's something like the commutative principle or something like that. But yeah, um, understood. I was. I guess what I was asking is whether um, we can um, 
for lack of better word, move the uh, T at the one T. Well, we can. Well, we can do whatever we want. So never mind. Yeah, we can move the one T at a, at a time, I guess. Um, well, what we, what we could basically do basically just balancing one on the other side is we could do this, but this is this is like this is not going to work. But we're gonna we're gonna try it. We could do this, and if we do this, we're gonna do, then start canceling things. So we'll be like, all right, that cancels, that cancels, and the squared cancels. But then we just end up with you know s over t equals u plus one half a t. Um, and then you know we <laughs> like this this is a problem because if we do this again it's like all right if we do divide by t and divide by t then it's like all right well let's see this cancels and this cancels uh if we uh actually yeah no it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna end up like this it's gonna be like divided by t divided by t divided by t because you can just split that across the addition and then obviously this will cancel, but then you've got this business here on this side. So like you, you're just switching it back and forth over here. You never get rid of the T. Right. So there's, mm. um, so dealing with this, uh, and we're not actually going to do the math for this because it's just a pain in the neck. So there's two ways we can deal with this. We can do something called factorization. Uh, let me... And, you know, Wikipedia is a good reference for this. So uh, here's the Wikipedia page on factorization. And you can sort of see this diagram here is like what we could do. Um, and I'll just quickly draw it out. So say we have an equation like um, x plus 1 and uh, x minus 3. Um, and what you can do to this equation is you can um, multiply it through it. So we end up with x times x plus 1 minus 3 times x plus one, and then we go through and say, all right, well, x times x is x squared, plus one times x is one, minus three times x is, okay, so that's, that's gonna be minus three x plus one, so that's minus three times one, so that's gonna be minus three, and then we uh, simplify that out, so it's x squared plus, um, that would be two x, hopefully I'm not screwing up the mass here, minus three, so you end up with an equation like this. And what you can do is, is, is you can go through a process to go back up and get this factored equation. So we're pulling this, these components out. Um, and there's a nifty thing that I want to show you that's not really relevant to what we're doing today, but it's worth knowing about. And that is if we were to stick uh, an equals zero here. And so that kind of is a useful thing. It's like, well, what? Uh, it, it's, it's a useful thing to do occasionally. And we can be like, well, well, when does this equation equal zero? Well, we're doing a multiplication here. So it's whenever this one equals zero or this one equals zero. And it's like, when does this segment equal zero? It's like, well, that equals zero when this X is minus one. And this one equals zero when X is positive three. So X equals positive three. Um, does that all make sense? Yep. Yep. Sorry. The, um, just some background noise. That's right. Just trying to keep myself muted. But, yeah. I vaguely remember this from, from math class. Hmm. And, and if you were to graph this equation out, it's like, if, if, you know, if this is, uh, if this is Y and then, um, you know, we know that we, these are now the zeros of this equation and then we can have a graph that looks like, okay, there's one, two, three, and, uh, we know that the zeros are at x equals negative one, so that's going to be uh, there, and there's a zero at uh, x equals three, so one, two, three. Um, so we, we know that these are the where if, if this is y, it's like where that y y equals zero is when x equals negative one or negative three, and then we end up with you know the classic um, you know parabola 
which is, you know, we know if we have an x squared, we have a parabola. So that's, that's just handy stuff to know about factorization. Awesome. Can you give me one second and then yeah, yeah, just yeah. edit the spot wherever yeah. we are right now? Yeah, okay, yeah, hold yeah, on. yeah. I gotta get some background noise. That's right. Hold on. <clears throat> do, 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 do. So, for everyone watching on YouTube, here's the Wikipedia page on factorization. Um, and obviously, we can go into a lot more detail here. <laughs> Okay. That's all right. Um, okay, let me see. <clears throat> so there's an alternative to this factorization thing, and that is the, uh, do, 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 what's it called? Uh, quadratic. <clears throat> so the quadratic formula. So is this familiar to you? This, um, That's negative. another nightmare from, from math class, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't remember it, but I definitely recognize the that a, x equals negative b plus or minus. Yeah, this, this, minus this or, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember having to memorize this, and it was like, well, now I now I don't have to memorize it, so screw you, uh, maths class. Um, but this is like the if if you want to do this reverse process, this is like this is the maths required to do that, which is fine. Um, and so what I will say about our little equation here, uh, this one that I've scribbled through, um, s equals ut plus half at squared, that is, it can't be factorized um, in this way. But we can sort of vaguely factorize it. Um, I think you can just use the quadratic formula to do this and it's just a huge pain in the neck. So what we are going to do is going to do what any sensible um, programmer trying to do maths would do. And that is we're going to use Wolfram Alpha. So all we're going to do is we're going to be like, all right, we're going to type the sucker in. It's like s equals u t plus half a t squared solve for t. And we just get someone else to do it for us. And what it's going to do is it's going to come out and it's going to tell us the potential answers to this problem. Um, <clears throat> and so are, are you happy to accept that these are the formulas that give us the amount of time that this motion takes us is either that oh, yeah. or that. And um, you know, if, yeah. if there's no acceleration, so we know this is not the case, it's just a matter of, you know, how fast are we moving divided by, uh, sorry, the distance we have to move divided by how fast we're moving gives us the time. This one's really simple. It's just this one. Um, and so this assumes we have some initial velocity and no acceleration. But if we have acceleration, we're kind of moving in an arc. Um, so what we want to do is we want to choose one of these two formulas. Um, so uh, I'm gonna I might make another layer for us. And, we uh, have we have a so I mean the second one kind of stands out. I'm having trouble seeing them both because they're a little small. Ah uh, yeah 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 okay. So well I mean can I zoom this? Is Wolfram gonna let me zoom? Can I please zoom? Actually no. Rather than much better. Rather than even trying to copy these, I'm just gonna do this cool thing where I just print screen it and paste it into here. Okay. <clears throat> um, I mean, the first two are basically essentially the same where you're just putting the sign somewhere else. Um, e cropped selection. Okay. So, yeah, so you can see um, there's a minus sign here and a minus sign here. So uh, one changes out the front and then this plus or minus u here. So let's uh, let's do a little bit of 
uh, analysis of these equations because um, that's actually that's actually how we select which one we want to use. So um, let's think about what we know about this. So we know that uh, we're going oh, wrong layout. Um, here we go. Okay, we know we're going uh, down from here down to our target. So is our target, uh, and so if we if we were to define this well, we know that s is negative because we're going right. Yeah, down. it was positive on the way up. So it's positive right. on the, exactly, exactly. So we in in this case we're actually going to completely ignore the way up because this, this is yeah. I mean yes, we were positive on the way up, uh, but for these equations it's always negative. Um, so we know S is negative. Uh, what else do we know? We know that A is negative. We know that uh, because we, we know we want this somewhere in the future, we know that T equals positive. Uh, and we know that, and this is going to make this really easy for us, we know that U equals zero. Uh, so are you happy with uh, this? Yeah. Cool. Well, All we're right. going to divide by a, if we're going to divide by a negative, that'll be negative, won't it? Um, so, well, we have to look at all of these uh, things. So, uh, you're, you, yeah, bas basically, yeah. So, um, let's see. We've got uh, negative. Uh, so, we can expect the output of a square root to be positive. If it's not, if, um, yeah, just assume this is always positive in this case. There's no way to get a negative out of a square root um, in a sensible way. Um, kind of the way this is defined, this is why I think I closed the window. Did I? I did. That's all right. Um, when, when you see the... Um, quadratic equation, you'll notice that they stick a um, plus or minus on there. Um, <clears throat> right. And the reason for that is, you know, when we're solving something, if, if we have, I think we had an equation before, it's like, um, you know, uh, u squared equals, uh, you know, we'll just call it n squared. Um, and then we, it's like, all right, we'll solve for u. It's like, all right, u equals square root of n uh, hang on sorry I got that wrong u squared equals n so we want to solve for u we, we're going to go uh, square root of both sides so we're going to go uh, u equals the square root of square root of n and what happens here what we really should be saying is u equals plus or minus the square root of n because for all we know, u could be negative. So if, if u is negative uh, here, and it's like negative times negative because we're squaring it, we're going to get a positive result out of it, which means that n could be positive. Um, so, but also if u is positive, it's positive times positive equals positive. And so this is ambiguous. Hmm. So then we have to resolve that ambiguity by saying, okay, it's plus or minus. So this is exactly what's happening here. It's like the reason we're getting two possible answers here is we don't know if, if this is like a positive or a negative. And it's just more complicated this case. Um, so if we start to rewrite this, okay, so U is always zero. So we actually don't care about that. This is positive. This is positive. So we have uh, A is negative, and then we're negating the whole thing. So it's going to be the first one. Because otherwise, you know, we know that this one, the top is always positive, this is always negative, and the result's going to be negative. So we're going to choose the first one. Now, one thing that's interesting to say about this is they still both make sense. Because uh, when we're calculating this, this is uh, time of down equals zero is here. Um, or time start of down 
like the initial position of this is zero, which means that when we get the final result for t, we're trying to hit this position on the y-axis. So this is going to be t. But we could also say that we, we hit in this motion uh, the same y-position t. This is also a valid way to get it. We just have to have um, we just have to go back in time. So there's actually a valid uh, negative t here over over back in the past mm. that we could have started at, come up here and then gone down. So does that make sense? How that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't want that one, but it's actually a valid answer, and that's what this is. But we want that's this cool. One. Exactly. Exactly. So that's handy to know. Anyway, um, so now we have t equals negative square root of 2as plus u squared plus u divided by a. Now, all we have to do is simplify this. Um, and this is pretty simple because all we, do, all we have is we know that u equals 0. So I'm just going to go through and just say, OK, we don't need that. We don't need that. Um, and so t equals uh, negative square root of 2as on a. Um, so are you happy with happy with that? Um, yeah, other than obviously, I've, I've got v, I've got my, sorry, I've got my u's and stuff, like u, d is v, and I've been keeping my v's around, but I, I won't for this, but it makes sense. That's um, right. Can you bring that back though? Yeah, <laughs> just, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was just um, Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was like, oh, you're doing something in the IDE. I'll have a look. It's like, yeah, you need to see what the formula is. Um, all right, that's good enough. Okay, let's see how we're going. Um, Hmm. Oh, I haven't declared S yet. This is not S, though. This is S. Ah, so we haven't figured SD's out what... SD's target position. Yeah, SD. Yeah. So let's figure out SD. SD target Y. I think that's it. Well, uh, that's pretty good. Um, but there's one, there's one error here, and that is SD is incorrect. Oh. Now... Um, the reason SD is incorrect is uh, that is the absolute position and you need the relative position. So if I can find my drawing. Um, so you've got, uh, you know, wherever the... Oh, the inverse makes it... Uh... Oh, well, well, you've got whatever the, you know, the Y distance is to there. But what you actually want is whatever the Y distance is from this top position to there. So that's something that we need to calculate. Hmm. Um, okay. So I probably need S first, don't I? No, I don't. <clears throat> I need um. So we have we kind of already calculated this to a certain extent. We've got the target Y. We know it's relative to the shape position, the lob height, and we've got the height to reach. Um, so we know that the top of where we're going to get to is going to be the starting position plus the height to reach. Um, so that's probably where we want to start. Uh, does that, does that make sense why we want to start there? Starting position um, plus the height to reach. reach. Yeah, well that's... Well, we're just basically translating from where the mouse is to where we have to go, right? Um, we're shifting it up. Like... Well, we want we want this position here, and the thing about this position is, you know, height to reach is that distance up there, and the reason we have to consider that is because it could also be. Uh, this business here. Yeah. 
So, uh, yes. Um, hmm. And so we can get the absolute, like, so what we can do is if we, we know the absolute position of this relative to the, you know, the x-axis, or sorry, the y, well, yeah, the x-axis line. So we know, we know this distance here because um, that's just target dot y. Um, we just need to know the uh, uh, absolute position of this. And we can subtract the two. And we have the uh, absolute position of this because this is uh, shape dot y. Shape dot y plus height to reach. We also have um, actually no. That sorry, I've yeah, I've I've misdrawn this diagram because uh, because this is actually uh, over here. Uh, I'm going to have to erase this. I made a mistake there. Minor minor error. Uh, this is actually lob height and right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's height to reach is actually this. So it's actually even simpler because we've got most of it's height to reach. So getting getting this green thing is like really easy at this point. So yeah, I'm just I'm I'm wrong by one thing. I think the okay. I have to let me. I have to subtract the target y from the position y. I think. Okay, so we've got you've now uh, shape position plus height to reach gives us the center. So all you have to do now is figure out the relative uh, distance. So we've. You SD what you've currently written there is there or there, um, and all we need to do now is go down this far. So, uh, and this is our this is our famous um, end minus start start equals relative position. So if this is our end and this is our start, um, that should be really simple. So. Looks good to me. Looks good to me. Um, however, um, yes, that actually, yeah, I mean, it would have, yeah, exactly. You need the brackets there because otherwise this plus would be the wrong thing. Um, target Y minus position plus height to reach. Okay, and then we have SD, Y. So that's looking pretty good. So we've got time up and time down. So now, now is we're pretty much on the home stretch. Like this is this is where this gets nice and easy. Um, what color haven't I used yet? I'm going to use use red. All we have to do now is get this distance here. So we've got. Um, <coughs> We'll go back to the other layer. So, um, what we want to, <coughs> whoops, what we want to find uh, is, we have time x now, and that is equal to time up plus time down. So, I'll hand this over to you. We want, uh, well, what do we want? Well, hold on. Can you explain that a little more? Why? Uh, you, I mean, I guess, I guess that's the how we're the travel on the x-axis in total. How yeah, much so, time we're spending moving from left to right? Yeah, this gives us the amount of time that we're going to have to move. Yeah, uh, left to right. So it's going right. to be all of the time it takes to get up plus all of the time it takes to get down. So all right. The time up, so we time can, we we can't just substitute that in here. Um, uh, I'll have to look at what here is. Uh, oh, sorry. I just mean like where we've got the time times time times 0 0.5. No, because time here is our animation time. So that, mm. that one just keeps moving. So we need actually, um, 
so what the thing we're trying to find is because we've got our velocity to go upwards we've got uh so this is where we scroll back up to u so we've actually kind of got the y component of u but we've just set the x component of u to zero so this is actually what we're looking for here oh right which is okay. why we're gonna have to like grab out this u and just be like all right we'll take the u and we'll just bring it down below where we're doing all our calculations because we're actually going to start adding some more calculations in there <coughs> oops now i'm just moving everything the wrong way here ah now actually okay we've we've run into we've run into a minor issue here and you probably can see what's happened I was trying to see, see where it is on yours. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, we actually depend on the initial velocity on the y-axis for all of these calculations that will be the initial velocity on the x-axis. So we're actually going to have to split this out. So let's take uh, this and call it uh, let's flow u, y equals... Can't be a constant, can it? It's already got variables. Oh, I don't, in. Yeah, sorry, that was just me brain farting that one. <laughs> yeah, is, the ordering here is actually tricky, and this is <clears throat> this is one reason that eventually, if you're doing multiple of these things in like a chain, like we're doing, you kind of have to start thinking about all right, what's the you know velocity up, velocity down, um, you know, maybe with this u we could call it velocity y or something. Um, And it can, it can get messy if you're just using one letter variable names. Yeah, I'm in the world of hurt here now. So let's, <clears throat> I, think, I think what you really want to do is, yeah, take that and put it at the top. And once you have that at the top, the rest of it should pretty much fall into place. Yeah, but my original time up was u dot y, but you've changed it to ui. Yes, so th that's, this is what I'm saying is <clears throat> we're about to calculate ux based on time x, time down, which it's uh, time up, which itself is based on ui. So we actually have to, we have this problem, we actually have to calculate ui first and use that as a uh, temp um, as an intermediate to calculate ux. So we can't actually do it in here. I mean, we could do it in here if we'd like, okay, now we've got u and we're like, all right, we've got u dot x equals blah, 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 blah. Um, I guess what I'm doing is I'm not setting it to zero and then later setting it to something else. I'm setting it to the thing we want as soon as we declare the variable, which is reasonably good practice to have. Yeah, sorry. I got what I'm con what I was what specifically confused on is that we when we originally worked on time up, we just had this as a component of y, but now it's actually a calculation. Yeah. So all we all we've done is we've. Um, oh yeah, duh. Yeah. yeah. No. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because we we took it out of that because it used to be here. Exactly. And this is dot y. Okay. Duh. Yeah. yeah. Just the brain part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good to go. That's all right. All right, um, so UX. Uh, that's OBS. Let's see, here we go. Okay. Um, so, all right, we want uh, on this last one, we want UX. What do we have? Um, and so, I mean, this is, this is pretty simple. So, um, well, we have time. We have time. We have S. And we have. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> um, 
Oh, uh, uh, Gimp has done that thing where it's lost my undo buffer. Nice. I can't undo anything. <laughs> All right, <laughs> don't make any mistakes. We have, we have T, X. We have. Yeah. What else have we got? S. We do have S. And we have uh, U. Sorry, uh, no, because that's what we're trying. No, we have U. We have a different U. Um, do we have? Do we have velocity? We don't have the velocity. We're trying to find the initial velocity, oh. and it's going to be the same right. as the uh, final velocity because we know that there's no uh, air resistance or anything in this particular direction. There's also no gravity in this direction, so we know that right. a a is zero x equals zero, which makes our life nice and easy. So, so a t and s to get u. Yep. So looks like the only one is the fifth one. Um, a t and s. Oh, get there's u. no this is a b. There's no u in this fifth one. That's yeah. Not. <laughs> a t and s to get u number two. Uh, two's looking pretty good. Um, so let's it down uh, here. Um, we probably won't need this much room. Just, uh, let's see. So, um, let's get my paint program to behave itself. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I, I draw like that to test I'm on the right layer and try and undo it, and then it doesn't undo. Oh, God. S equals UT plus plus one half a t squared. Okay, and so this one's pretty easy. Do you wanna do you wanna take a crack at solving this one for you? Oh uh, yeah, I'll do my best. Um right, so isn't this the same one where we had factor problems? It is, but Well A is zero though, yeah. A is zero. We have a very simple thing we can do here. Well, at well, at and that means, yeah, <laughs> right. It all goes away. It all goes away. This is just the magic of zero. Um, right. So u is equal. So u is going to be um, t divided by s. Wait, no. Nearly. S goes. Wait, u goes over there. Yeah, move, moving the T, so I have to divide it. Yeah, S divided by T. Piece of cake. Very simple, that one. And this one's, this one's like obvious, because it's, um, uh, you know, U is a velocity, so it's like meters per second, and this is like oh, meters per second. So that one's, that one's super simple. So let's just bang that one in. Uh, so yeah, we had SD divided by time X, gives us UX. And if we haven't made any mistakes, <clears throat> we should be able to just run the sucker. And um, all of the things that we plop in, plump in here should all Whoa. throw themselves at the mouse cursor. We've made an error. They're going the wrong way. They are going the wrong way. So we're going to have to debug something here. We've made a mistake. <laughs> Fancy that. Um, and we've run into we've run into this issue that we had um, the other day, and that is, you know, as soon as we try to um... actually, no, I guess you're dividing by time x for ux. I'm not. I'm dividing by time down. Oh, I've made a <laughs> I've made a real bad mistake here. Derp. I'm still in the wrong, going the wrong way though. Whoa, hey. That looks like it's doing the correct thing in just totally the wrong direction. Yeah. No, actually it's, God, it's completely wrong. What have we done? We've done something horribly wrong. Um... Well, UD is not being used, which is, that's okay because it's actually zero, so that doesn't matter. I can just delete that from my. Um, let's get rid of all these comments. 
this all makes sense. Maybe it's the target positions. Where where did we have that? That could be like um, adding on where it should be subtracting. Mm, I think it's correct. Um, so okay, so let's let's um, hopefully we'll, we'll take a quick stab at debugging this. Where. Uh, we're about at time, but let's let's just do a quick thing. Let me show you how we go about debugging this. That's not the right answer. Yeah, this is that's the peril of um... whack a mole. Yeah, that's that's not a. That's, let 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 me show you the good process for debugging this. Okay, so we've got this bit yeah. of drawing code. And we want to figure out, okay, where uh, something's going wrong with the calculation. And we need to basically step through this and get all the values. So, and we don't want to just break as soon as we draw. So if we stick a breakpoint in there and just hit F5, you know, if we draw a shape and the damn thing is going to trigger straight away. So yeah. that's no good. So what we want to do is uh, if um, uh, input.key is key down, oh, Maybe key went down, key went down, keys got space. Uh, debug dot, oh, actually debugger dot break. And that way we, you know, we, we can control when the breakpoint hits. So we set up our set up our system. It's like, all right, we want one shape because we're in a loop here. I'm gonna move the mouse over down here. So it kind of looks like everything we've been doing up to this point and we're gonna hit the space. And the breakpoint didn't trigger. That's annoying. Mine did. That's weird. <laughs> so I, I just went key went down. You have key is down. I, I had that before and I'm changing it. Oh. Well it worked that time, that's fine. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, so then we can step through and be like, all right, well. T is time. Do we use T anyway? We shouldn't. Gravity, we're happy with gravity. Acceleration, happy with acceleration. We're happy with S0. So pretty safe to say that these are all correct. I, th I think we can probably get rid of this T line. I don't think you even have it, so that's fine. Lob height is two. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Target Y, okay, so it's negative that plus lob height minus whatever that is, or two. So that's also pretty straightforward. It's gonna be two. Velocity V equals zero, that's fine. So um, the initial velocity on the Y axis should be positive, and it is, so that's fine. And then the time up should be uh, that should take a positive amount of time, so we're happy with that. Uh, the distance to go down, that's a negative distance, and that looks vaguely reasonable, like it's like uh, that and that, height to reach 2.0, so sort of looking at these values, that seems pretty straightforward. Square root of acceleration times that distance there, that's negative, and that's negative, so that's gonna be positive here, positive square root, that's fine. And that, so time down should also be positive. Okay, so we've got the total time x is going to be a positive amount of time. Um, and then we are moving... Found the bug. Well, that's u is equal to s divided by t, but the initial velocity is negative, not positive. Well, um, the bug is on this line. In fact, it's this, this thing I've highlighted. So if we think very carefully, can you can you tell me why this is the bug? The initial velocity is ut, so that's... Yeah. 
Um, is it time down, not time X? Uh, no, because you know we, we've calculated time X correctly. It's going to take 1.3 seconds, and at least in my case, right. 1.6 in yours to get from here to here, or to go right. up and hit the target again. Yeah. So time X is fine. The initial velocity of X is... And so, we, well, we know that the initial velocity of X is wrong, and we know that this is right. So the only other thing in this equation is SD. So we know that SD has to be, there's a problem with SD. So can you, can you tell me what the problem with SD is? SD is the target position, right? It's where we want to end up. Hmm. But it's some um, negative. Um, okay, well, let's let's go through here. Let's SD is this is this is this is where we do like okay, we've hit a bug. Now we need to do a bit of code cleanup. So the first thing to do would be like well, SD uh, that's not a very good variable name. So what we could say is, um, and I'll just kill the debugger here so I can rename things. Um, we could say that SD is relative distance down because that's, that's what we discovered uh, in the drawing uh, over here. Um, yeah, SD is from here to here. So it's the relative, yeah, here's SD. So it's the relative distance down uh, to reach that point. But it's not also the relative distance up, like we're only taking the down bit. Yeah, so we're only taking the down bit. So the uh, relative distance up will be height to reach. So uh, you need to add that here. Well, I want I want you to think very carefully. Um, now, this is this is like our sort of not so much unit analysis, but um, uh, our like I don't want to give it away, but um, <laughs> there's 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 another kind of analysis that we can do about you know what what are the things that we're adding and subtracting and dividing because there's there's a mismatch here that's handy to know. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, the initial velocity is taking all of the time that it needs to go mm -hmm. up and down and then only accounting for the time to go down or the um, the distance down so that would that would compress the amount of it would compress the initial velocity to an incorrect value would it not well um, what what I would say is you know what we're trying to calculate here we've got the time we need to take to get from here to here and we are trying to calculate this velocity to go this direction. Mm -hmm. But the, um, basically, basically we're not, this is, this is completely wrong is, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And, um, you can kind of see that if you like, okay, UX TX. And if we, if we were to grab this out, for instance, Hopefully, if I if I just replace that with that, and this is one reason like having these things be immutable is handy, because I can just reach in and grab that. And if we look at this equation now that I've grabbed the contents of that, hopefully this should really hammer home why why this equation is incorrect. You wish. <laughs> Paste it in there and and just so now we all we have to do is look oh, at the this. Wrong, it's the wrong component. Yes, exactly. Why. That's why it's going the other way because it's actually going. Um, yeah, it's yep. using the, the distance. Yeah, yeah. well, yep. that's a straight up wrong. So this is fortunately very easy to fix. Um, you know, this is our end minus start thing again. Um, so the end is the target, and the start is where we started, and then now we're done. So we're basically we were basically missing relative. This is relative distance up, or sorry, relative. Yeah, distance so it, right. In in our in our thing, that would be um, you know float s x rather than s d is what we had. Right. Is sorry. I'm just doing this. Ah, oh, come on, laptop. <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. Just wanted to call this relative distance. Right. 
I guess. Uh, well, don't call it right because it could be negative. We could be going left. Right. So relative distance x. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. It is. I mean, it is right in one sense, and that is it's correct. That's right. That's right. That's correct. Uh, That's whatever. Uh, 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 It'll never end. Uh, and then we have to get rid of the debugger break, so it actually this doesn't. is also broken. If you notice, the I can't make a small circle anymore. Really? Yeah, it just gets big. I'll have to debug that later. That's weird. Oops, I don't need this anymore. So if we make a whole lot of shapes and mash the spacebar, they all hit the same point, which is exactly what we wanted. Right, although it's sort of like not exactly because what mine's doing is well, I, oh, I know what's happening. It's just the, the lob. Oh my is... god. I've got the same bug. Isn't that weird? Have we? Oh, I think I know what that. What the hell? <laughs> that is really strange. If I zoom out a whole lot. Is it because so we. Lo... Hmm? We changed. We changed. I think we had a minimum in there. Yeah. So could also be the zoom. Yeah, because because we had a minimum in there. This is this is not so much a bug as we've just like changed the zoom scale. Um, so over here, you'll see we've got this the maximum of three or the distance there. So I'm just going to get rid of this max to fix that because we actually that's something that's not a bug. That's something we deliberately coded. But then we changed the scale of the world. That's right. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So yeah, next time you next time you're in there, it's pretty pretty easy to fix. Um, I can make a whole lot of these suckers and boing. And the uh, the only reason this doesn't look like the diagram is just that the lob height is short in our case. Uh, well, so you just, you've zoomed all the way out. So if you if you now um, <clears throat> yeah if if you now uh, go in and make that change, you can you can stay at the zoom level where the gravity makes sense and the rest of the scaling makes sense and um, you'll get the same result as me right I'd have to fix that though because I can't make a small enough yeah so circle that, that's, that's, my own. that's trivial yeah I'm just looking for it now yeah um, in place circles in update there you go So, I mean, that was, that was handy because it's very easy to make, like, you know, zero-sized shapes, which is not ideal, but now that we have a camera doing proper camera scale, that would need a more sophisticated solution. Whee! <laughs> so that's nice and satisfying. And you, and you can imagine, mm -hmm. um, like for all kinds of games, this sort of process is very useful. It's like, I mean, literally what we did in River City is like, we want to hit a particular point. How do we calculate that? That's right. So that's that's the entire process of, of doing that. So um, let's, uh, let's call it there and we'll look at something else next time. Any questions before we finish? No, I'm good. Excellent. All right. Uh, see you later, YouTube.